Hello, and thanks for watching this Acumatica video on printing and emailing statements. So to get started with this, let's take a look at Acumatica statement cycle settings so we can see the initial setup. So if we go to show full menu and we go to our preferences and look at statement cycles, we'll take a look at our end of month statement cycle. This is based on the sales demo database. And typically an end of month statement cycle is used for most companies, but the schedule type here has other options. So you can fire this once a week, twice a month. You can set a fixed day of the month. So maybe on the first or the 15th, for example, uh, end of month as mentioned, and then end of financial period as mentioned also. So that's an option too. So let's keep it at end of month. Here we can require payments are applied before statements. So in Acumatica, you could take on a payment and not apply it to an invoice. This requires that that's done in advance. This will print any empty statement. So even if the customer has no activity, uh, that's an option. Now down below is our aging periods. So you know your typical buckets. So you have a current period here and you can define it, give it a label, one to 10 days. 11 to 30, 31 to 60, and then over 60 days. You have definitions here. And if you need to, you can make changes to these as needed. And then our aging, is it based on the due date or the document date? So this will put your invoices into different buckets based on either of these dates. So if you have terms that are extended, 30, 60, maybe 90 days, and it's different for different customers, then you probably want to select the due date but you can also age based on the document date here as an option. Now down below is our finance charges. So this cycle ID is applied to each customer. Now in Acumatica, you can have multiple cycle IDs, but if we go back down here to finance charge settings, these preferences apply to the customer that's associated with the cycle ID. So here we can apply overdue charges which again means that overdue charges will be applied to any customers associated to end of month cycle. This requires that overdue charges are calculated prior to the statements. So which means we have a processing screen to do this. And this is the overdue charge ID that's used against the invoices. So now that we have that set up, Let's take a look at a customer profile. So we'll look at ABC Holdings. And on the general page, you can see the statement cycle ID is defined here. So this is end of month. And you'll notice you have the ability to override some of the settings such as apply overdue charges. If I go over to my bill settings, Acumatica gives us the preference for this particular customer as to whether to send the statements by email or print or both. So if we turn on send statements by email here and we save it, now this customer is eligible to get a statement during the next statement cycle. So let's talk about that for a second. If we go back to the statement cycles, you notice Acumatica is maintaining the last statement cycle. So it's going to keep track of this. So the next time we run statements based on the period set here, Acumatica will advance ahead one period. So now let's go to receivables, processes, and let's prepare our statements. So we'll run our end of month and we get a warning here because Acumatica is saying that Overdue documents have been found, and it's recommending that we calculate the overdue charges based on the preference we have. Now, the other thing is this says prepare for 327. We don't want to do that, not with my demo data anyway. So we'll go back to the last time it was run was 1213. So uh, I won't go back too far, but we'll run it in maybe March, the end of March 2015. So we'll check this and run process. OK, 
okay? So this is run our end of month statement cycle. Now there's quite a few great screens in the software for looking up the statement activity. So the first one is statement history summary. So we select the statement cycle and we'll pick our date range. So again, back to January 2015. And of course, you can see there's only one statement cycle that's been run, but Acumatica shows you the number of documents, which ones were supposed to be printed and emailed, which ones have no action, and based on that, the email completion and the print completion. So again, nothing really got run here, but let's click on statement history details. And what you can see is for every customer, there's a statement balance and what you can see here is don't print and you also see a don't email column so based on the customers preferences this is defined against each customer when the statements are run now if we double click on this one we now get a customer statement history showing all of the statements that are run for this particular customer notice the filter is set for this customer their statement balance, their overdue balance, and whether or not it should be printed, whether or not it should be emailed. And you can print the statement right from here too. So this screen doesn't have a lot of data. So let's go back for a moment and let's prepare our statements again. And let's go over to April 2015. Let's get a couple of records here. So we'll run it for the end of April. We'll process all. Note that you can schedule these to run automatically. Okay. So we'll drill back and go into our inquiry screen and let's look at our history summary again. We'll bring up end of month. We'll change our date range to January. Now you can see that two of them were run. So let's drill into April. So this shows all the statement balances for this statement cycle. And again, if we double click on ABC Holdings, that'll bring us up the customer statement history. And that shows you all the activity for that particular customer. And as I said before, you can print the statement for any given period. This is very useful because you wanna be able to turn back the clock sometimes and see what statement the customer received maybe a few months ago. So let's go over to receivables and go to processes and let's print out our statements. And here are the different actions. I can print the statements, I can email them. I can mark them as do not email or do not print or I can regenerate statements. Let's select a statement cycle first. And you'll notice we have nothing in the print queue because none of our customers have this set up. But if we go to email, we can see ABC Holdings. A statement was created and marked to be emailed. So we can process all. And now our customer's statement has been emailed. So a couple more things we could look at here. First off, if we go to all emails, that's our email queue. And we look at outgoing emails. You can see here is a statement. This is the form that Acumatica uses. You can modify this form if you need to. Modify the email part of the form, as well as what it looks like. You can take a look at the attachment here, and that'll show us what it looks like. Here's the aging buckets we talked about. And additionally, if we look up ABC Holdings, we use our global search. And we go to activities. You can see all the activities for this customer, including tasks and reminders and emails. And this email for the customer statement will show up here as well. And we can get to the actual statement by clicking here. So that's it. It's that easy. If you have any questions, at the end of our video is our contact information. 
feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks again.